Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another video from my channel Interactive Education and today we are going to discuss a, uh, an extra concept in the chapter reproduction in organisms for class 10th and this is as such not discussed in your textbook but it is very often asked in examinations in school examinations and even sometimes in board examinations. So without further ado, I'm going to start this concept, a very, very easy concept. It is basically a description and a, a detailed description of fertilization in plants. Now, plants undergo, uh, flowering plants undergo a certain process called double fertilization. They do not undergo a single fertilization between male gamete and female gamete. Actually, there are two fertilizations taking place in the ovule of the piston of a flower. Let us see what it basically means. Now, we know a general perspective of this that uh, basically what happens is that the pollen grain comes onto the stigma of a, of a pistil of a flower. So basically, this is my uh, pistil. Okay, let's try it properly. Suppose this is my piston. All right. This is my piston and this is my ovary. Now, you know that basically what happens that pollen grains land onto the stigma, right? They land onto the stigma and then there is the growth of the pollen tube, which goes through the style and it enters the ovary and in the ovary there are many many ovules right in the ovary there are many many ovules basically there are many many ovules in the ovary each ovule so suppose if we try to take a section of an ovule If we take the section, cross section of an ovule, then this is the structure of an ovule. In the ovule, there is this internal structure where there are three cells on the top. Then there are three cells at the bottom. And then there are two nuclei in the center. Okay. This is the ovule structure. And this internal structure. Okay. This structure. Okay. Of cells in the ovule. This structure is called the embryo sac. Okay. It is called the embryo sac. Right. Now let us try to understand the structure of the embryo sac in a bit of detail. Okay, let us try to study that. In the embryo sac, these upper cells, right, these cells at the top, these cells are called antipodal cells. Okay, they are called antipodal cells. They do not perform much of a process in the double fertilization that we are going to study. So, we are not going to go into much of detail of this. So, they are antipodal cells. The cells at the bottom, these two cells, these two, only these two cells, not the middle one, only the terminal cells. These two cells are called the synergids. Okay, they are called the synergids. Again, they don't perform much of a function. And this middle cell, this middle cell is our main person. It is the female germ cell. It is the female germ cell or the egg. Okay, it is the female germ cell. And these middle two nuclei, these two nuclei are called polar nuclei. What are they called? Polar nuclei. These polar nuclei are diploid structures. They are diploid structures. That is, they have 2n chromosomes. Right? They are diploid structures. They have a two, they have a complete set of chromosomes, right, polar nuclei, because each has N and N, together they'll form 2N, that is a diploid structure, right. 
So this is the overall cross section of the embryo sac which is present in the ovule. Right? And the ovules are present in the ovary. Many ovules are there in the ovary. Now we are going to study how this double fertilization takes place. So basically, when the male, sorry, when the pollen grain lands onto the stigma, right, this is the stigma. Now, when the pollen grain lands onto the stigma, it is going to uh, grow the pollen tube in response to certain chemicals which are secreted by the stigma. So, the stigma receives the pollen tube and there are going to be certain chemicals which are going to be secreted. Right? If the pollen grain is of a plant of the same species, if the pollen grain is of a plant of the same species, then in response to those chemicals, it is going to grow the pollen tube. Right? And this is an example of chemotropism. We all know that from control and coordination. It is an example of chemotropism that is response to chemical secretions. So the pollen tube will start growing. And when the pollen tube completely grows up till the ovary, then the male, then the pollen grain is going to release two male gametes. How many? Two, not one. That's the point here. That's why double fertilization. There are going to be two male gametes. There's going to be two male gametes which the pollen grain is going to release because pollen grain is basically, it has a cyst. And the cyst contains two pollen grains. Together the cyst will break and then the male gametes will come out. So two male gametes will be released by the pollen grain. These male gametes will travel down the pollen tube and then enter the ovary. And they are going to enter an ovule. They are going to enter an ovule. In the ovule, let's come back to our embryo sac. Now, in this embryo sac, which is in the ovule, the male gametes are going to enter. So, this is going to be the entry of the male gametes. So, suppose these are my two male gametes. Let me use another color. So, these are going to be my two male gametes. Okay. So, my two male gametes are here. Now, these male gametes have entered the embryo sac. Now, there are two male gametes and each gamete is what? Each gamete is haploid. That is, it has half the number of chromosomes, only N. So, male gametes, two, each is haploid. Now, what is going to happen? There are going to be two steps which are going to take place. Now, please be careful. This is where we are coming to our agenda. Two steps are going to take place. Number one. Number one. One male gamete. One male gamete fuses with the female germ cell fuses with the female germ cell to form zygote to form zygote and the zygote is going to be diploid because female germ cell is also haploid male gamete is also haploid both are going to fuse to form the zygote right now let's uh, draw this uh, just write this in the form of an equation kind of thing that male gamete fuses with female germ cell or female gamete, whatever you want to call it, same thing, female gamete and together both are haploid structures, together they're going to give you the zygote, right, which is going to be a diploid structure. This fusion, this first fusion is what we call syngamy. It is called syngamy. Right? This first fusion is called Singami. Singami is the fertilization between the male gamete and the female gamete. That is the fusion of the male gamete and the female germ cell or male germ cell and the female germ cell. This process of fusion is called Singami. First step over. Right? So Singami first takes place. That is fusion between male gamete and female gamete to form zygote. Right? So we are done with the first germ cell. First germ cell has performed its function. Now we come to the second germ cell. The second germ cell goes to the polar nuclei. So what, this one went here and this one is going to go to the polar nuclei. Right? So second step is going to be that the second male gamete, second male gamete will fuse 
विल फ्यूज विद पोलर न्यूक्लियाए विल फ्यूज विद पोलर न्यूक्लियाए टू फॉर्म अ ट्रिप्लॉइड स्ट्रक्चर a triploid structure now as i told you before the polar nuclei together form a diploid structure because there are two nuclei each has half the number of chromosomes so together they are going to form a diploid structure and the male gamete is a haploid structure so n plus 2n is going to give you 3n which is a triploid structure three sets of chromosomes so as in a normal cell so they're going to form a triploid structure this triploid structure is called the primary endosperm nucleus so triploid structure is called primary endosperm nucleus primary endosperm nucleus and in short it is called pen or pen primary endosperm nucleus right so let us now show the uh, equation for this basically what happens the male gamete which is haploid is going to fuse with the polar nuclei that are diploid and together they are going to give us the primary endosperm nucleus which is triploid right so i hope that's clear and this process of the fusion between the second male gamete and the polar nuclei this process is called triple fusion it is called triple fusion because here there is the fusion between a male gamete which has half the number of chromosomes that is n and polar nuclei that has a total set of chromosomes together they form three sets of chromosomes which is actually one and a half sets of set of chromosomes right it is going to be one and a half set of chromosomes one full set plus one half set so 3n right and that is why we call it triple fusion because there is a fusion between male gamete and two polar nuclei there are two polar nucleuses right so they are that's why called polar nuclei because there are two polar nucleus right so this process of fusion between male gamete and polar nuclei is called to form primary endosperm nucleus which is a triploid structure is called triple fusion right so i hope that's absolutely clear so we saw that there are two fusions taking place two fertilization process taking place right there is syngamy that is the fusion between male gamete and the female germ cell and then there is the triple fusion process which is the fusion between the male gamete and the polar nuclei so since now here we come to our conclusion since there are two fertilizations taking place at the same time since there are two fertilization syngamy and triple fusion taking place at the same time the fertilization in angiosperms or flowering plants is called double fertilization because there are two fertilizations that take place at the same time and hence the fertilization process in flowering plants is called double fertilization right so i hope that's absolutely clear right now this ovule right this ovule it will have a, a zygote this zygote is further going to develop into the embryo right it is going to further develop into the embryo then the ovule as a whole is going to develop into a seed the primary endosperm nucleus this one it is going to provide some nutrition and nourishment nutrition and nourishment to the embryo to some extent it's going to provide nutrition and nourishment to the embryo right so i hope that's absolutely clear to all of you right so with this we are done with the process of double fertilization in plants i hope you understood it this was on demand that i made this video so i hope we who whoever had a doubt in this concept is absolutely clear with it now it's a very very interesting concept so i hope you're clear with it and it's very easy to understand also just a bit of uh, understanding just a bit of 
concentration is required so thank you very, very much for joining me today i hope you learned something and i hope your preparation for your science examination is going extremely well thank you very much for joining me any doubts are welcome in the comment section below please like and subscribe goodbye stay healthy stay smart and do keep studying bye bye